welcome back again everybody thanks for tuning in and taking the time to look at another one of my videos again there's lots to get through on this one so here it is it's a 1984 matchbox peugeot 205 t16 Well, firstly, thanks very much for all the likes, all the comments, all the suggestions that you've all been inundating me with. I'm really, really chuffed to bits with them. Some people say they're too long, some people say they're too short. I try my best to try and please everybody, but I know you can't always do that. But I do appreciate all of the comments. I do read them all, even if I don't answer them all, I do read them all. And I will give them a, a thumbs up, a like, a heart and all the rest of it. So onto this car then, um, I've got a few of these 205 T16s, um, again all played with as a kid, some are better condition than others, and the one I'm going to do this one, the one on the right, it's mainly the paint that is a little bit worse for wear, the whole overall car is not too bad, there's no chips, dents or any defects in there, I will do the windscreens again when I get round to it, so there'll be a little bit about that. So on to opening up this car then I find that some of these matchbox cars of this era have got quite big rivets uh, mushrooms uh, to hold them together sometimes then when I come to put them back together again after I've tapped them um, I use a washer as well as the screw to hold them in which I'll cover later on um, but once you open this one it's typical of this era the plastic chassis they've got this um, lovely spring mechanism a little piece of sheet spring steel i guess um held in by the uh, a nipple again people laugh when i've been saying that i've said nipple on every single video so there we go here's another nipple um the has two glass assemblies effectively in this one one for the front one for the back so this one i've got to drill out again separately um, i've got to be a bit careful with this one because too much pressure obviously i'll come out the other side too much heat i might distort it but nevertheless it's got to come out i will make my own little glass screens again at the end so i'm not too bothered if i break it time to take the paint off and chuck it in my little bucket of um <clears throat> semolina um all the people have said it looks like something else so um we'll keep them buried in the comments further down on the other videos but yep yeah, to me it looks like semolina um I left this one overnight actually, um, I had other things to do during the day so I just left it in there and as you can see it falls off absolutely beautifully and um, with this one I haven't got to do what I've done in the past videos and use the little dental picks or all the scalpels to get into the nooks and crannies, it literally all just fell off really really straightforward, very light moving around with this stick um, and a brush as well and a good clean up and it was all done within minutes of pulling it out of my little pot so it is one of the nicest and smoothest castings i've seen as i said at the start there's no damage from me smacking this one around as a kid i think it was just purely the paint had, had come off it where it had been stored in a box but there's no work whatsoever to do on this one it's really really smooth so i'm happy i picked this one out of the two with this car um, i'm going to keep the little suspension mechanism in there and i'll spray simply straight over it when i come to do it later on but for this one i'm going to use garage 64 wheels it's the closest i could find to the speed line replicas on the original car although they don't look too like the speed lines they're close enough almost a bit like an oz rally one really but i'll go on later on about these wheels because they are really really good and i do recommend them but going back to the chassis i'm going to spray the same color as the body but first with this one it's so simple to pop the wheels out of these matchbox cars they literally just as you can see come out with ease there's no cutting mucking about with anything i'm just going to use 
a little bit of methylated spirits just to clear up the chassis a little bit better just to get some of the, the muck and debris that's off there and it's a bit hard to see under the, the light here if I get the shadows on it yeah you can see it's got some great little detail in there you've got the diffs front and rear pop shaft running to the middle but as with the bodies I'm gonna spray it very lightly with some primer before I lay some of the other paint on there some people in the comments have got a little bit hung up why I'm using spray cans and not the airbrushes well I do get an air well there's an airbrush here in the background as you can see but it's a bit like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut sometimes if I've got the paint already there as a base color and I've got plenty of cans automotive paint and model paint if I've got that color I'll use it it's as simple as that and as you can see just back then I always put the spray cans in some warm water only for a couple of minutes just before I do it because you get a lovely pressure build up in the can and get this nice mist and spray pattern when you come to lay the paint down so you won't get all the blobs flying out so it's a good little tip there if you didn't already know that that is but what I'm doing now is just putting all the color base on the interior on the chassis and on the body so I've got a good palette to work from effectively now I've been modeling and scratch building for a good 30 years or so so I'm going to keep trying to introduce new more and more different newer elements into these videos as I go along only because when I customize these cars I don't just want to put them back to standard I want to enhance them a little bit and here because it's got such a great in interior and engine bay I'm just simply going to add a few more little details not go too over the top on this one I'll do it as I go more and more down my channel and add more and more cars on there for you to look at but with this one I'm simply just going to paint the engine paint some paint some of the pipe work paint some of the interior um, I'm not gonna go through every single thing I'll paint you'll just keep seeing these appear as we're going along through this video because I think if you all sit there and watch me paint it's a bit like watching paint dry I think you'll be bored to tears watching it but all I'm simply going to do is just go around the car like I do with all of them add a few little details in with a range of different size brushes and different size paints I use enamel paints and acrylic paints I always use a little matchstick just to stir it up a bit and because you can get to that proper mixed paint at the bottom and not the oily bits that sit on top so I always use that method now I'm gonna add a few little extra details like some HT leads on this one and all I'm gonna do is basically drill some little holes on the top of the engine and if you haven't already got a set of these uh, drill bits and one of these rotary tools a little twist drill with a little swivel head in your in your toolbox they're great for modeling you've got to use very very light pressure because they are so fine they're like little needles really um, and the last thing you want to do is break them so little pressure like I always say with any tool let the tool do the job and as you can see it starts to bite in and it's only 10 15 seconds and you're straight through to the other side so go easy do a few pilot holes just go through it again just to clear it all up and at the end of it you can really make the car come alive with a few extra little details I've used some lock wire on this one because I had no black wire it was silver lock wire and all I've literally done is cut them to length glued them in painted them black um, and I'll do some final trimming later on once it sit well, once it sat inside the um, the final car assembly so I can see where it's going to foul with the windows again I'm going to use my little method of evergreen styrene the clear styrene 9006 the part number is make a couple of templates and cut them out as I said on the last one and I will 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 get around to doing it I promise is do its own standalone video so people can reference and they haven't got to keep putting it in every single one the only reason why I'm putting it onto this one 
is I've decided I'm going to make them as single pieces this time because of the complexity within this particular model. But I also, as you can see, wanted to add what a lot of group, B, well, a lot of rally cars actually have is the little slidey windows when they're pulling up to Park Ferme at the start of the rally, at the end of the rallies, and they're handing out the documents to the timekeepers. So I'm literally using some of this clear fix glue, which I'll show you later on if you haven't already used it. It's very good stuff. It doesn't dry all misty and cloudy like other super glues, but you can use it brilliantly on these clear parts. And you don't get any misting, as I just said, coming through. So it's called clear fix. I'll show you later on when I actually come to fit them into the car because I'll be using it again. But all of these I've decided to make separately only because it's going to sit in there a lot easier because it's got hinge mechanism as well in the roof it's a little bit more time consuming making one big assembly so and it acts effectively it's got two heat shields in it if you could call it that i'm going to start adding lots of details now uh, both painting and using lots of little bits of styrene for lots of other details and with this little bit here i'm doing now is a the car, the T16, had a rear centre exit exhaust coming out the rear. And all I'm doing is a little tear light, firing it up, using some little tube of styrene again, and simply melting it, and just letting it cool at an angle. So, as you can see, when I put it against the car, I'm going to have it coming out of the centre of the car, mimicking the real car. I always reference sites like pinterest things like that or just google just google images and try and find as much info as i can on the car what they look like uh, all the little details because sadly obviously they can't always put them on these little cars we can of course but obviously the manufacturers don't have the time money or energy to do it and effectively what i'm trying to achieve is this rear assembly that looks a little bit more like the real the real car again the evo 2 version which i'm having to use a little bit of artistic license on this i can't do everything how the evo 2 looked against the original t16s had a larger bonnet scoop intake can't do that on this one purely because the screw which holds it all together comes right through the center of where that opening would be so it just wouldn't wouldn't go right so i'm having to use a little bit of both um but with this one i can make the evo 2 wing and again i'm using some styrene i did a template in paper first cut round it sorry drew round it now i'm cutting it out and simply shaping it on a little scale sanding stick So I always pride myself on making my own decals for all my cars. I'm not going to go too in depth on this video with that because I'm using this actual car to make a standalone video on decals because a lot of people have asked me about that. So following very, very quickly after I upload this one will be how I produce and make my own decals. But here all I'm doing very quickly so as not to spoil the other video is I've made, again, using reference pictures, a set of old 124th scale decals that I had for another car as well, for a part of a template to get some of the delivery right. And I'm simply just mounting it to the car, of which later on I seal in with some automotive lacquer. A couple of coats, letting it dry. In between if you really want to you can polish it afterwards and it comes up very very good now back to these garage 64 wheels I found them on Facebook of all places and I've yet to try and find them a website for them or an Instagram feed or anything like that but they're really really good little tires and wheels I say tires because they've got they're actually rubber really good little quality they've got a little tread pattern on there you get them in these little boxes, uh, I think two sets of each colour, white, black and grey. So there's plenty to go at, but what's really good is these how they go together. So for all the people that don't like making their own axles, it's a very, very fine little rod and a very fine little pin. And they simply 
they do stick together um, but they will move you do need to put a little bit of glue in there to hold them and all I do and this is a real easy game car to show you because I haven't got to cut these down they're absolutely spot on because you can put the screw the little pin sorry as far in or as far out as you like so you can make pretty good track on there the width of the of the actual not wheelbase the, the track of the car simply a little bit of glue they are a tight fit so it will dry pretty much instantly wipe off any excess and the wheel goes right up to this little pin edge and they're, they're good to go really easy to do five or six minutes and you're done great look quality wheels really good so back to adding a little bit more detail again with uh, my beloved styrene stuff this is the heat shield effectively which sits underneath the exhaust and I'm just rolling it over the end of a paintbrush to just to give it a bit of a curve but if you sit it underneath it replicates a little bit better what the original car is I can't really cut the chassis to have it exiting as the real car does because that's how the whole matchbox car goes together so I can't effectively fit it all if I did cut it and drilled it through hence that's why I've glued it on coming to install the windows now this is the clear fix I was I mentioned earlier on if you've never used it it's really great stuff it sets clear as the name suggests and doesn't go all misty and foggy like other super glues and looks all horrible and it's great to use it on clear assemblies obviously because of that I use either a very thin paintbrush or mostly a little food pick toothpick cocktail stick and just literally put a little bit on and then use some fancy technique like this to keep it in place for a few minutes while it sets so whilst that is drying I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of these little styrene things that I make because a few people have asked me what is that stuff I use a product uh, by a company called Evergreens and you can get tubes uh, bars, flat sheets, squares, H-beams, I-beams, L-beams and you can make absolutely anything. You get a little tub of liquid and you effectively brush the two parts together and it welds it together. It doesn't glue it, it welds it, it melts it together and you can make anything, whatever your imagination. That's why um, it's been around in model making for donkey's years. Architects use it. It's very, very good. If you haven't already looked at my Instagram feed, you can see the little things like this that I've made. And if people are interested, I will do a little how-to feature on that. So just let me know. So going back to the car again, some more final little details just before we wrap this one up. And I'm going to add some little mud flaps by simply drawing out a little template first cutting it making sure it works transferring it over to the vinyl again and I'm using vinyl sticker because it's the closest thing to the scale mud flap actually but I can actually fold it over and use the sticky bit that I've left at the top just to simply stick it straight to parts of the car here's what I've neglected to do in other videos to show you how I put them together and I use M2 screws I use a one and a half mil tap to tap the hole but then I use M2 screws by about five mil sometimes I've got to cut them down to even smaller than that and as I said with this matchbox one I've got to use a washer to put them together final pieces are the Evo 2 spoiler that I've now painted added some little supports little metal rod supports like the real car and some little aero canards I think they're called canards canards these little aero fins on the on the front wings a little bit of weathering if you've not used this stuff before it's a bit like um, ladies makeup effectively um, little brush end a little sponge end all sorts of different weathering pieces of rust, soot and everything you can think of. Whilst it doesn't look like there's a lot going on, it does come up very good and effective afterwards. And finally, 
some number plates I always put on some little number plates uh, by printing them off as a decal putting them on some little thin pieces of styrene adding the glue with a bit of toothpick a uh, cocktail stick again because it's more precise and simply just dropping the number plate on the back I've gone with my own name this time because of the, the final number plate of the real cars was far too fine so I've just decided to add one of my own little name and numbers so if you have a quick recap of how this one looked it actually looked a lot worse than it was when I stripped it down to now the finished item there's a lot more going on this one than previous cars that I've done mainly with the windows the spoiler the engine bay um, I haven't gone too mad on the engine bay I'm going to leave that for future videos leave myself somewhere to go and not to put too much in but as you can see there's a lot of difference from how it originally looked a not just the color but the little wires that I've put in there and um, I think the windows on this one sets it off pretty good the little slidey windows on the side the mud flaps and the spoiler but comparison side by side it's it's a night and day difference it's, the stance on it is a little bit lower and that's not anything I've done it's purely the wheels and the profile of the tires that I've put on it from garage 64 but little details like indicators lights and here is one other thing I've neglected to do in other videos people always ask me do they actually roll um, everything I do does roll um, I can't believe I've overlooked that when I've come to, to finish it but you can still push it around like you did as a kid with the other ones um, I'd say they're just as robust they are uh, this particular one with the spoiler and the, the little aerodynamic fins on the front probably are a little bit more delicate but you can handle it just like you can with any other Hot Wheels Matchbox major at cars so overall this is the final piece so there we have it I really appreciate as I said all your comments and your support and making this channel grow making my enthusiasm to show you more of what I've done in the past and what I intend to do so thank you very much for joining me until next time